and welcome to Nana's first ever parent recess hour. I'm your host, Dr. Olivia. So excited to get into a good conversation with all of these awesome panelists. A little bit about me first, and then we'll do intros. I'm Dr. Olivia, aka the Baby PT on all socials. Um, I'm a developmental physical therapist, and I specialize in working with little nuggets, zero or newborns to about three years old. And I'm also a mom to a 20-month-old uh, Julian, and he is so fun right now, but definitely going into that toddler phase um, where he's starting to defy naps, being picky with eating, and all of these other things. So I'm super excited to kind of talk about it and get some support from these awesome panelists. And I love being a Nanit ambassador because I just love the product. I think it's a fantastic product, the highest quality um, product for their niche, probably on the market, I would say. And I'm absolutely loving getting to know the team a little bit more as well, which we will meet here in a second. So it's just been a really great working partnership uh, with Nana, and I can't wait to get into this parent recess hour. So let's get started. I'm going to hand it over to Kayla, Nana's director of social media, to introduce herself and explain a little bit more what Nana's recess hour is. Kayla, take it away. Yes. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Olivia, um, for hosting our first ever Nanit Recess Hour. It's been absolutely amazing partnering with you this year. I know I've learned so much from you, and I'm just so excited for everyone else watching to also learn from you today. Um, hi, everyone. Please don't be shy. Feel free to say hi in the chat. Um, I'm Kayla. I'm the social media director, like Dr. Olivia said. I have a six, almost seven-year-old daughter. I don't even know how that's possible. The time really does fly. Um, and this past year, I have seen the coolest changes in her. I feel like milestones such as walking and first words are always talked about and are obviously cherished memories. But I'm currently witnessing now just the growth of her mind and her heart, as corny as that sounds, but um, it's been really amazing. And also now that she's in school and has made friends and wants to be a part of teams and clubs and so on, the girl is booked and busy. So managing not only my calendar as a full-time working mom, but now hers too has definitely become an art form. And as someone who co-parents with her father, there have definitely been some valuable lessons. <laughs> but let me go back now to what Nanit Recess Hour actually is. The idea for this event came out um, of a conversation actually I had with Maristella, which she'll introduce herself in a second, around how hard parenting can be, um, even for experts like her and Dr. Olivia. So we decided to turn that into something bigger and hear from other moms and dads about their different parenting struggles and triumphs. Um, and I think this event really gives you all the chance to hear from real parents, Nanit ambassadors like Dr. Olivia, and real employees that work here at Nanit um, based on where we are in our parenting journey, um, our experiences using Nanit, um, or in my case, how helpful Nanit could have been for me seven years ago when I had my daughter. So all that being said, um, I'll hand it back over to you, Dr. Olivia. Awesome. Okay, so let's get started in introducing the amazing panelists. Maricela, do you want to introduce yourself first? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Maristella. Um, I'm the sleep expert. Um, I have done a lot of years doing research, and then I have joined Nana uh, almost a year and a half ago. Uh, I have three kids. They're eight, six, and one and a half. Um, so we have been through many, many milestones. And I also have to say personal milestones as a mother. I think, you know, parenting a child, um, your first, your second, your third, you see the same milestones but you're different, they're different, and there's, um, it's a challenge, and it's also, the, I think, part of the beauty of it. Um, so that's a little bit about me. <laughs> awesome. And then let's move it over to Ms. Quinn. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Quinn. I oversee brand marketing here at Nanit. I've been here about a year and a half, and I have the privilege and pleasure of working with some of these fine folks and many, many others. Um, it's been such an amazing year because this product and this brand is so special and we get to really bring our whole selves to work, especially if we're parents, but even for those 
who aren't parents on the team, I think the work is is still really meaningful because we know that this this work can real really impact and and, and support so many. Um, I'm also a mom of an almost three year old. She'll be three on Sunday, and my struggle right now is truly watching the next level of toddlerhood unfold before my eyes. Like the next level of tantrums and meltdowns. And it's, I honestly, most of the time I'm just like speechless and frozen and just watching it. Like, it's like, you know, watching it all unfold because I have no idea how to manage it half the time, but that's, that's my current struggle. Um, other than that, obviously it's been such a joy and such a, an amazing journey that I know we'll, we'll all talk about, um, on this call. Definitely. Okay, Miss Melanie, take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm Melanie. I'm the Director of Brand and Community here at Nanit. I've been with the company for coming up on three years. Um, I have a almost 21-month-old daughter, and I'm currently expecting my second baby due in February. So it is so interesting going through your second pregnancy when you have a toddler. I think my biggest challenge right now is just figuring out time to do all of the things that I need to do while also being exhausted and wanting to rest, but also wanting to be very present for my daughter. Um, and now that I've entered my third trimester, I feel like there's just so many emotions associated with bringing another baby home that I wasn't fully prepared for. Um, so working through that, and then my daughter is just going through a crazy language explosion, which is so exciting. And every day she's saying new words and she is able to vocalize what she wants, which is fabulous, except for she wants more cookies, more shows more things that she doesn't always get to have. So just learning how to best communicate with her um, is the phase that I feel like we're in right now. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Same. <laughs> uh, we'll get to talking about that. And then lastly, let's introduce Dylan. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Dylan. I'm the beta program manager here at Nanit. So I'm in charge of like coordinating all of the user testing that we do with any of our new features in products. And I get the unique opportunity to like test that stuff with my eight months old, my eight month old son. So um, yeah, I'm the, I think I'm the newest parent here. So I have kind of a, a really awesome like uh, relationship with Nana as I got to test all these features and then actually use them the past eight months. It's been a lot of fun. Like just this today, my son turned eight months and I got the, Nanit uh, uh, memories notification that he turned eight months with all the cool filigree. So I'm just really excited to be here and chat with the community members. Um, I get to talk to users all day, um, but I've yet to be on a, on a community webinar. So this is my first one. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yes. Welcome everybody. And I think it's going to be a great chat and just to pick everybody's brains. And I'm loving that every parent is in their different journey, but we all have something in common just being a parent. So before we jump into the questions, I want to take a moment to mention the giveaways happening um, throughout the chat, just to keep everybody engaged and to have some really fun ways to win some awesome prizes. So let's go over how to participate in that. So to enter, all you have to do, guys, is participate in the chat. Um, our chat moderators will be asking questions for you to answer and the winners will be notified after the event via email. Um, so some of the prizes are, these are great prizes. Um, three lucky winners will win one year of the Milestones Insights, which is an incredible upgrade. Um, five viewers will win the Sound and Light Machines, which I am uh, a huge fan of the Sound and Light Machine. Julian, my son, really, really likes it. I love the pink, black, pink, white, and brown noise specifically. He's a big, big fan. Um, and then five winners will uh, win our new holiday PJs, which the quality of these PJs are great. Um, so to enter, all you have to do is participate in the chat. So um, let's get started. Uh, since we've made it all past the blurry newborn phase, my first question for the group is what were some of the best and wildest moments you've seen or faced in the newborn phase? And Dylan, as being the parent with the youngest child, let's start with you and how you're feeling about just getting out of that newborn phase. Yeah, so the the sleepy fog has cleared and it's a great day every day now. There's no, uh, 
you know, getting up at, at early at night for night feeds. I'm just past it. Thank God. It's, um, it was hard, but you know, it was fulfilling. It was, I got to like learn how to be a father and, and be there for my wife and be there for my son. And, um, he's sleeping well, he's eating well, he's happy and healthy. And my wife and I are hitting our stride with his routine and everything. Um, the wildest thing I would say was probably like getting through the first sickness that he had when he was a newborn, mm-hmm. you know, learning like the cues and stuff that go through that stuff. Um, we had a hospital stay too. So that was really, really hard, but you know, you learn to lean on your doctors and, and um, be, like comfort your son. And, you know, that was a, a really huge crash course for that. It was uh, yeah. Contact naps, naps and snuggles were, were big yeah. for that. Uh, that's all I can say about that. It was, it was uh it was fun. It was rough, but it was, you know, it was fulfilling for sure. Definitely. And for um, Melanie, what are some of the biggest changes you've seen from the newborn phase to the toddler phase? Oh gosh, so many. I feel it's so interesting <laughs> because everything is such a phase. Like you look back and when I think back to newborn, I'm like, oh, it was so much easier. But I'm like, is that just because I don't remember anything? Like, <laughs> you know, what, what? My memory, I think, is just shot completely after having kids. But I think the biggest thing that has surprised me in terms of like the changes over time is that sleep is constantly top of mind. Um, Maristella and Natalie and our our sleep team here at Nanit were amazing partners and helping me learn how to get my little one to sleep. Um, But as she's gotten older, there are still challenges that come with her sleep. And I almost find that toddler sleep is more challenging because they're just more aware. Um, Switching from two naps to one for me, I think was like the biggest challenge when it came to, to sleep with her. I think that took us like a couple of months until she was actually on that one nap. Um, And that's when Nanit for me was so helpful because I was able to share some of that information with Natalie, I would show her my dashboard and say, well, like, you know, she, she's having these, she's still having two long naps, but she's waking up every day at 5am. Like, what is the, but she literally cannot make it to noon for one nap. So we were able to use all of that information that Nanit was capturing to put together a good plan on like how we could slowly transition her to one nap. And part of that was just like every day, see if you can push her 15 more minutes. And we would literally just be like sitting there, like trying to keep her awake because she'd be like falling asleep in my arms. Um, But having a tool like Nanit for me was so helpful because I am more type A, so I like to have all of that information, but it was nice to know that I personally didn't have to track it. So I could always access it if I needed it or if I wanted to reference it, Um, it was there for me, but it, it took one thing off the list because especially in that newborn phase, there's so much you have to remember. The last thing you need to do is be trying to like calculate how long your baby was asleep for, like when they woke up. Um, So for me, that was such a lifesaver. I wish yes. there was a way to just like have a million little Natalie's and Maristella's. And I think that was one of the reasons why we decided to launch our tech talk series on TikTok. And for those who don't know, um, we have our sleep experts in, who are internal um, answer all of your sleep questions and share all of their tips and their knowledge. So definitely check that out if um, if you're in the thick of the newborn stage right now. <laughs> Yeah, that the tech talks on TikTok are one of my favorite things. I've learned so much because I guess this goes into kind of the next question, which is specifically for me and Maricela, just how do we handle the challenges of not always knowing the answers as experts? And, you know, I'm an expert in in baby development, but sleep is not one of them. So I was starting from literally zero and scratch. And before I had Nanit, and I was going to bring it here, but I left it at my house. I had a notebook of logging. I mean, like everything from like Julian's when he peed, how much he drank at 10, 21 a.m. And then when he would sleep and I would take notes on you know, what his nap looked like, how long, and that was before I had Nanit. So it kind of, Nanit kind of just culminated everything and could give, like Melanie was saying, my brain a little bit of, just take something off of my plate. So when I was first starting out learning, trying to be an expert in sleep, which is not easy. And I don't, I don't claim to be, um, 
having Nana and all the resources be, being on social media with y'all's excellent content, more educational, and then just relatable. And then having something like the TikToks where I could really just kind of dive into and nerd out on everything about sleep. I just learned so much. So Maristella, I want to kick it to you and how you've kind of been handling that same challenge of not always knowing. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And uh, I, I still remember that night that I was sitting in my bed with my little one crying and then the other older two woke up because he was crying hysterically and we were all up at 2 a.m. And I looked at my husband, I was like, how am I a sleep expert? Like this is this <laughs> just doesn't match up. Like this is just a whole mess. And nobody prepared me to deal with like sleep with three kids in a tiny New York apartment. That's not what I studied. What am I going to do? So I had like this entire crisis and like, you know, I remember just my husband like looking at me and hugging me and saying like, we're going to be fine. It's just a moment. Like try to sort of step back a second. And, and that was very helpful because I feel like, you know, when you're in the moment, when it's your child, when it's you that are sleep deprived, it's sort of hard to take a moment, go over all that, you know, contextualize it and saying, okay, we're going to be fine. This is one day. This is one night. It could even be one week. Like I remember when my, my little one, like now he's a one and a half, but like a, a one year ago when he started teasing and then he had some things with food when he started eating solids and he was just so fussy and um, just trying to sort of stay in the moment and say, okay, this is a phase. I have the tools. What are my tools? And I remember one morning I woke up and I got one of those nanny like tips and I read it and was like, yes, that's perfect. And, and then I realized that I, I, I wrote those tips with together with Natalie and I was like, I, yeah, I knew it, but in that moment, I didn't know it. I had forgotten about it. I was so tired. And so I think like, it's been always sort of like this dance between I'm the expert, but I'm the sleep deprived mom as well. And sort of have that grace towards yourself that there are going to be some days when you're going to be a hot mess, but that doesn't mean that you don't have the tools to to deal with what you have in front of you. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a delicate balance, but uh, yeah, we've been excited to get my, my reminder from Nanette of the things that I know. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I feel like when you're, you know, an expert, you, you especially in Marcella, like in sleep and then me and babies and we have babies, but I feel like all of your education, your tips, your tricks goes out of the window when it's personal to you and it's your baby. And, and it just, I, I found that very uh, true to me when I was like, oh, I know exactly what to do here. And exactly what to do here, but the minute it gets more of that emotional tie where, or you're sleep deprived, like you said, or you're emotional and hormonal and, you know, uh, postpartum, I feel like that's when you really have to lean on somebody else, your village, and then having like this component where Nana just throws out tips left and right. And, eat, and then it's so funny that you made that tip and you forgot. I think that's amazing. And it, that's just kind of that support that you didn't really know you needed, but it's there and it's um, it's really special. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Very needed. Um, okay, so let's see, let's move on. Um, so what, just opening for everybody, what are um, some of the most exciting things you faced in parenting multiple children? Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's a big one for me. Um, I have to say I had two that were super, super close. They were like less than two years apart. And then one that came like five years after, and it's been such an interesting and different journey. There was also the COVID-19 period in the middle, which I feel like has changed me as a parent, as a person. I think everyone can relate to that. Um, but I have to say that, you know, the first two grew together, uh, they played together all the time and it was much easier in a way, like, you know, they were just two years apart, but then seeing them becoming bigger brothers and sister with the little one was like, I don't know, I don't know how to express it. Like, I think so much of them revealed of, of who they are. Um, and, you know, again, it's, it's not easy. Sometimes it's so hard to match all the schedules and the calendars, like, the the time where my baby naps usually is when I have to go pick them up from school we had to rearrange all our schedules and um 
and you know that it would be best if they slept in the crib, but sometimes they have to take a nap in the stroller because you have to do stuff. So definitely there's um, there's a lot of challenges. Um, and so, but anyways, it's it's also been uh, it's also been it's 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 been revealing all our uh, strengths as parents as a family to see them grow up together. <laughs> How do you keep yourself grounded and sort of like a neutral force amongst so many different personalities and also different phases of where they are developmentally? Right, because you have oh. a one and a half year old, so you know that's encroaching on toddler. You have older kids that are close in age, so there might be some like sibling stuff happening there. And like again, I have just one um, toddler, and it's hard for me to feel like I can stay neutral and not reactive and do all the things that everyone you know says you should do or or that can be helpful to do it's it's tough for me to like not take the bait <laughs> especially when their personality it feels like it changes overnight <laughs> or is that just me yes yes yeah, I think you never know what you're gonna get uh that day um you know you know them but they also change and you know there's so many things like again sleep they don't get a good night's sleep you know that the day it's going to be rough right um but so there are days when i can't keep my cool but i think also as going through this journey i've also learned what are the battles that i want to pick and what are the battles that i don't want to pick <laughs> like what are, where should i focus my energy uh like my husband jokes that usually when we had one child we would leave the house i don't know to do, go out for an afternoon with a ton of stuff and now we have three kids and we have like half the stuff right. because like in time, you've learned what you need and what you don't. And I think it's the same dealing with your kids, right? There are some things that would have freaked me out with my first child. And I'm just like, I know you have it, you got it. Um, or I know that this is not that important. You're going to be fine. Uh, you know, I remember with food in the beginning, deciding, you know, what they were going to eat, da, 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 da. It was driving me crazy. Or they were not doing the nap at the right time when they were with the nanny. And I would like freak out. Uh, and then like you learn that yes it's there are some things that are the best but there's also some days where you're not going to be able to juggle all the things uh and so you kind of I kind of have to yeah decide what are what are the things that matter and also then just sometimes I just lose it and then mm -hmm. just start again <laughs> and that's I... a the nice thing of kids like that they they love you and when you mess up they're not gonna dare to judge you they're just so excited that, that you can start again the next moment <laughs> That's so, that's so true. That's so special. Um, I wanted to shout out somebody in the chat, Carmen Valdez. I think this is going to transition really nice to Dylan's expertise. They're saying, she said that my Nana has helped me overcome, has helped me a lot overcome my fear. My baby was premature and I always was making sure she's breathing fine. Now with the Nana, I have peace of mind that I can check her breathing throughout the app without her waking up. And to somebody like a parent like myself or Carmen included, um, you kind of take for granted that that's available. And I think Dylan, if you wanna share your point of view on how you actually kind of helped build these features, um, kind of share your experience on that. I think that's an interesting point of view. Yeah, sure. The It was really interesting because we were testing um, some of these features that I got to use right away with my son, like up to the point, like just before my wife went to the hospital to give birth. And uh, one of those was temp and humidity, um, or no, excuse me, not temp and humidity, um, uh, uh, head and body position. Um, so we were testing that back in, I believe it was close to March. And and uh, uh, we got the, I went, my, my wife and I used that right away. It's funny, cause you don't really, you know, you can say, you know, you can, if you actually like, sat and looked at your baby all night, see what side they're laying on, you know, you would, you would know how, what side they're favoring and serves ahead of the body, but you're, you have to find some time to sleep during that newborn phase. And then it took that, that, that um, job and did it for us. And, you know, I don't know if that was be something that we would have caught if it wasn't for Nanit. And I got to go to my pediatrician and say, Hey, look, he sleeps favoring this side. I, I I don't want him to get a flat head on this side or, or or develop any kind of condition. What can we do? And then they were able to help me. I was, and you know, it's it's nice to be able to to work on that feature, 
know that it's working, be able to test it, and then get to use it as an actual user. It's yeah, I don't know. You don't really get that kind of experience anywhere else except from Nanit. And you know, another big thing that's coming up right now that we just tested and released was temp and humidity graphs because right now it's cold here. And trying to like make sure my son is comfortable and knowing what temperature it is in his room, what the highs and lows are, how it's going up and down during the night. You know, let's just say I'm going to have to go buy a new thermostat and install it this weekend because I have an old thermostat in this room. But, um, you know, it's let you, you're so in the newborn phase, you're so foggy, you're doing those night feeds, you're tired. If you're if your dad like me, you're you're rubbing your mom, your your wife's back, and you're making sure mom's okay, and you're giving her food and water while she's, you know, feeding the baby, and you might not be focused at, at night when you're asleep, and that it really helps. Very lucky. Yeah. So, Dylan, what has been your favorite tile on the milestone subscription plan so far? I know it's going to be hard to pick one, but if you had to pick one, which one is your favorite? Yeah, I think it would probably be the head and body position, but I really get a a, a really good, you know, it was not, I'll tell you what the, what the really shining thing was, was going back and looking through the different days and months and seeing how my wife and I are improving and how my son is improving. Yeah, you know, see him, the, the average daily sleep time, you know, I could see that that was going up over months. I'm like, okay, I'm doing something right here. You know, right. definitely. You know, I think for, good. for me, you know, as a developmental specialist, the features on Nanit are incredible. And I think like Dylan was saying, the sleep position and the head position professionally is something I have never seen before. And I think like Dylan was saying, it's so informative to have that information as the parent, because I feel like you're more informed and empowered to bring it to a provider, a, a physician, their pediatrician, et cetera. And it puts, it puts a lot more onus on the parent, which I think gives more confidence to the parent. So having all this data and information is a great way to just kind of keep informing yourself, which I know, it, which Kayla will get into a minute, how poor baby didn't have all of that with her little one. But now I think it, it's something so special. And so for me, the head position one, I can see professionally when treating, we treat a lot of torticollis, plagiocephaly um, constantly. It's, it's a huge diagnosis that I see uh, very frequently in my practice. That neck tightness from sleeping on one side, and then you develop that head flatness that impacts their development. They can no longer roll. Sometimes they can't um, hold things, and it can get it can just continue and get worse and worse. So, kind of nipping it, nipping it in the bud, just having these tiles on the milestones plan is. I mean, it's you're tackling it literally head on. So it's super super special. It's one of my favorites. I just wanted to shout out that. Um, she also, so good job. <laughs> so Kayla, let's move on. So now that we've heard from someone who got to use Nanit from the very beginning, like Dylan, um, I want to shift things to you because you didn't get to use it. So what are some of the challenges you faced in co-parenting since that newborn phase? Yeah, I mean, besides everything that all other parents deal with during those early days, exhaustion, decisions about feeding, family roles, child's care. I mean, you guys all know for me, sorry my dog's barking in the background right now uh, for me it was not only challenging to navigate through this new and exciting but also super scary stage in my life new stage in my life and all the changes that come with motherhood but also the guilt of my situation and the like how did we end up here thoughts um luckily I never felt alone for too long because I had an amazing support system um but working together with Lily, my daughter's dad, to form some sort of consistency so that we could rely on a routine, which is like one of the number one expert tips, right, that we always hear, was extremely difficult for me as a 23-year-old working single mom. Um, it was definitely like the bravest thing I've ever done and call it what you want, maternal instinct or being young and dumb, but I just knew that I could do it and that her father and I would figure it out together. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, when she was a newborn, we had a very basic parenting plan and place to start. You would visit, you know, every other night. Um, but I was definitely the default parent and I still am. Um, the biggest challenge was just figuring out our new communication style with one another and establishing a really good example for my child in different dynamics and relationships. I'm remarried now and have more help than I've ever had, which was also a big adjustment and learning curve and not always being like defensive, but it was so nice to be able to have some real me time again. Yeah, I definitely think that will resonate with a lot of people, Kayla. And then how has Nanit helped you um, co-parent during those later toddler years? Yeah, I think some people may think that your kids age out of a baby monitor, and I was definitely one of those people. But once I started working here and getting to know all of our products, I thought what a better way to understand all of the features and really play in the app than to test it out as a parent. Um, and since I've set it up in her room, um, I started two years ago, I've already been able to capture like her first tooth fairy experience. I've been able to share like weird new snoring habits that I didn't know if it was normal or not, or not with her dad and with her doctor. Um, I've been able um, to look through video history and, and make her feel safe during the nights where she didn't want me to leave. Uh, after putting her to bed. And I think the biggest Nanit, uh, biggest thing Nanit has helped me with is finally establishing that bedtime routine I've been dreaming of. So it's never too late. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and she knows now that after we read a book, after the sound machine is on, after we plug in the Nanit, because we don't leave it plugged in all the time, that it's time for bed. And one thing uh, as I'm co-parenting some nights her dad can even be part of the bedtime routine because of the two-way audio which I guess he could also just call but I think it makes it that much more special because it feels like he's there in the room with her that's so special I love that feature I use it all the time when I'm working and and my mom aka the nanny <laughs> the babysitter the everything the grandma is is watching uh, my son, you know, be able to say goodnight for a nap time or just look at his sleep insight uh, for the nap time and just share that is so special. And I think so unique to Nanit also. Um, and then I, a quick tidbit on, on mine is I just recently added my mom to be able to look on her phone on the, on the app. And she's, obsessed. I mean, she can't stop looking at Julian, my son, but it's so informative for her as well. And I think Nanit's done a really good job at, you can, you know, nerd out on the analytics or like my mom, a grandma, who's not that, um, you know, well-versed in a ton of technology. It's very easy for her to navigate the app. So it really runs the range of, um, user experience. And I think that's just fantastic. My mom, you know, loves just the high quality video of Julian and can, and she's very, you know, a typical Mexican grandma, like he's too cold in the temp. I'm like, mom, it's 75 <laughs> degrees, like calm down. He's fine. You know, but having that, so you're not getting into further arguments or discussions about that. And you can just have more time to enjoy your child and your family. I think it's just super unique to you. To yeah. It's been really cool. helpful for traveling too. I've done a quite a bit Absolutely. of traveling. And again, just making her feel like I'm still there with her. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that's really so special. Um, okay, so let's take a quick break. Uh, just to mention the giveaways, guys, don't forget to be engaging on the chat to receive all of these goodies. Um, let's go over what we're giving away one more time. So uh, one, three viewers, one year of Milestones Insights, five viewers, will win that sound and light machine. And then five viewers will win the new holiday PJs, which I'm super excited to get a, a look at. I think it's going to be so fun. Um, so let's move on to Miss Quinn. We touched a little bit on toddlerhood, um, which I'm currently in the thick of, as well as Melanie, um, and would love to hear your stories, but mainly to validate that I'm not alone. So how has Nana helped you parent your toddler? So good and bad news. <laughs> the good news <laughs> is <laughs> the good news is the sleep gets better. 
But the bad news is there are still disruptions and setbacks that happen, right? And so I think for me, having joined this company a year and a half ago, and my daughter was about a year and a half then, um, I was past all of the complications of like figuring out the right routine and wake windows and all of that. Um, but I was still utilizing Nanit for a lot of uh, just optimizing, you know, the, the setbacks that we were seeing, taking that, you know, we're so fortunate, right? We have access to Maristella and others on the team and, and taking that information internally and figuring out, okay, is this gonna last forever? <laughs> like, I can't deal with this all over again. I thought I'd gotten past it. Um, but the good news is as with everything, it seems in parenting, you know, everything is short-lived. Um, it does not last too long. You will get to the other side, having tools and technology to, you know, allows you to keep track and stay on top of those disruptions because if it becomes prolonged, then you know it may be something else. Um, you know, you can also start to align it with the other things that may be happening. You know, is your child have a cold coming on or something else happening? Um, is it a change of seasons? Is it daylight savings? Like you can start to kind of ladder up what's happening with sleep disruptions in the app with other other factors that may be going on, which is really helpful. And I think on a personal level, what I have loved the most about utilizing the product is it's allowed me to pause before taking action. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, we, I think most of us know that kids are such active sleepers and they're making constant noise all night, night long. And if I didn't have that, to be able to look in and start to understand what a true cry is versus what could be dreaming or what could be her in a very you know active sleep cycle, you start to really learn those patterns about your child and taking that pause, taking a look at the video monitor, seeing what's happening has really allowed, honestly allowed her to have more continuous sleep, um, you know, prevented me from disrupting unnecessarily that sleep and also give her a moment to see if she can get back down um, without, you know, my, my intervention. And I think that's so valuable um, as we try and, you know, allow these, these babies and toddlers to learn what it means to, you know, have really great sleep through the night. So that's my personal, you know, favorite everything that I've been able to learn and sort of, you know, most utilize, I guess. Yeah, definitely. I feel like that was my experience too. Uh, when Julian was a, was a newborn and he would like moan, I was like, Oh, he's up. Like, let me go. Yes, him. He would run or, in. Uh, yeah. He'd run in and same for my, my mom who watches him during the day. She didn't know that either. And I feel like it was on, maybe it was Maristella or, or Dr. Burnett, on one of the many TikToks or reels somewhere I saw um, how Quinn was talking about active sleep and then how active they are when they sleep. And I just had no idea. So just that little tidbit of information supported by the app uh, and where I can like see him and I'm like, oh, okay, that's very active. I had no idea. And that again, is just empowering you to keep going with, um, you know, trying to be the best parent possible. I thought it was really sweet in the chat. Stephanie Simon said, love seeing my little wiggle worms position changes, put her down in a swaddle. And when I get her in the morning, she sideways cracks me up every time. And I, I think all of us are like addicted to watching our kid on the nanit, and it's just the funniest thing. Um, and so, and so special, like I said, but Quinn, I wanted to talk about some of the challenges you faced in parenting a baby later in life. Like what advice would you give for that? Yeah. So when I had Suki, I was 38 turning 39 a month later, and it had been a journey in terms of trying to conceive and, you know, some of those hardships that come up when, you know, I think a lot of us, you know, pro maybe prioritizing other things in your life and just assume that like when you are ready to start a family, it will come. Um, and then you find, well, it's actually a little bit harder than that. And there's a lot more that goes into it for, for some of us. And so by the time we were fortunate enough to conceive, I was 38 turning 39 a month later. And I 
I have to say, I, it felt like I was going through an identity crisis. And I don't know if that is felt by others at who become parents at different ages, but that's how it felt for me. And I attribute it to the fact that I have designed my life. I had myself to look after. I had, I was able to prioritize the things that I enjoyed and, you know, that's it, right? Like that was the, 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 the end of it. Um, and so, especially when you are used to being so focused on career and other relationships and, um, you know, you, you feel like you, you're getting to a, a place in life where you're kind of starting to do things well, and then parenting happens. Right. And you're like, wait, I don't think I'm doing this well. I don't know what is going on. I don't know what just happened to me. I don't know who I am anymore. Um, but I will say again, short ish lived I've, you know, it took me about two years to feel like I've come back to myself a little bit. Um, and so that is something that I'd, I'd love to just share. If anyone's feeling that way, um, you do come back to yourself a little bit and it looks different. It, it, it obviously has to, you have this additional human in your life that you didn't have before. Um, but I, I also, the, the positive side of, I think having a child at this age is I know I wouldn't have been as I'm not like terribly patient, but I think, you know, the level of patience and the threshold I have for things now is completely different than, you know, I would have had at a younger, at my younger self, like for sure. And I'm grateful for a little bit of wisdom, a little bit of maturity in that sense that I can bring into parenting. Um, so I, I try to look at that as, you know, sort of like the positive side of, of doing this later. Yeah, I agree. Go ahead. Sorry. All right. No, I'm just like thinking, and I'm so glad that you mentioned that it took two years to feel like yourself again, because I definitely agree with that. And I feel like there was this expectation that I set on myself where I would immediately just go back to normal and feel completely like how I did before this huge change. Um, and after that six month mark, when people stop checking in as much and they feel like, oh, you know, she's got this was definitely the hardest for me. So I think you know, being more vocal about that and, and reaching out even after, um, people stop, may stop reaching out to you, um, was helpful for me. Like, hi guys, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it really too, um, it validates the relationships that are so meaningful to you because it doesn't matter if you need to take a pause or step out of, you know, the way that you usually engage with people in your life, because you know, they're going to be there for you on the other side when you do come back. Um, and like, I have best friends who, you know, they started to see that they started to see me come back around and they were like, Hey, welcome back. Like we missed you, you know, and it's all good. So don't worry about some of that stuff because those right relationships will be there. And couldn't I think like for me being able to handle sleep or like for my kids to sleep well was so important to have that time for me to be able to carve out those moments where I could still do the things that I loved. Like in Italy, it's very normal to go to bed later. So I'm from Italy. So all my my friends are like, why are your kids going to bed at 7 30? And I was like, <laughs> no, because then I have two hours and a half yes. to do everything <laughs> else. And also it's very good for them. But also, it's also for me. like, and I think like, you know, it's it's these little things and maybe you're not gonna be able to do exactly the same as before, but it's so important to be able to carve time, you know, to, to prioritize some of the things that are important for you. And of, as you say, like you change, you, you come back to yourself, you come back renewed and you will discover things that you didn't even know you could do. Um, but I think that, you know, that for me, it's a great motivation. And I see a lot of parents that start to think about their kids sleep because they realize that it has a huge impact on the time that they can spend on these things that they love and the people that they love. Yeah, I agree. I feel like it just ebbs and flows with the time you get to yourself, the time you pour into your children, it go back and forth, up and down. So I couldn't, I couldn't agree more in Quinn and Maricela. So um, let's move on to Miss Melanie, who's in the thick of raising a toddler also, but is expecting her second. So congratulations. Thank um, you. You're welcome. What are some of the things you're most looking forward to about welcoming your second child? I'm nervous about I'm sure there's some nerves in there yeah I feel like now that like it's actually approaching like I can feel the due date I'm like wow I can't believe I'm actually having a second baby I think second pregnancies um, for anyone who's joining us that have have more than one child it flies by I 
would forget I'm pregnant if my back didn't hurt and I wasn't so tired, but I just like, I never know how many weeks I am. I like have not purchased one thing for this new baby, which I am, as I mentioned earlier, somewhat uh, controlling, very type A, like incredibly organized. So with my first baby, I had spreadsheets, her nursery was done, like everything was ready to go. And with this baby, I'm like, it's fine. Like they just need a, I just need a bassinet. That's really all I need. And I have a ton of swaddles. Um, and I'll use my Nanit, of course. Um, but I think for me, what I'm most excited about is getting an opportunity to like relive all of those moments that I almost rushed through the first time. Like I, what I wanted her to sleep through the night. I was like obsessed with getting her to nap in her crib. I didn't want to leave the house a lot because I was nervous that like something would happen when I was out of the house and I wouldn't know how to handle it. So I wanted to be like in my comfort zone. So I think for me, this idea of having like a, another chance to do those first couple of months again and like live it a little bit differently is exciting for me. And just knowing that I'll be a bit more confident. Um, obviously, every baby's different. So this one will probably, you know, throw me for a loop. But um, I know that I'll have all of the tools that I need um, and the support from my family and my husband um, and my friends, which is really important. Um and I think the biggest thing too that I didn't do last time that I will do this time is accept more help. I think I was so, I don't know, I just wanted to do it myself. I don't know why. I think that's just kind of who I am as a person, but in hindsight, like accepting help from people, there's nothing wrong with it and it's good for you too. So um, I'm excited to just give myself a little bit more leniency in, in that newborn phase. Um, and then obviously I'm anxious and excited to see my daughter as a big sister. I know she'll be excited, but it, you know, it's a big transition. Yeah, I definitely think so too. I think you mentioned that you're going to use your nanit, of course. Do you think it would be beneficial now as a mom of two to upgrade that subscription plan? Do you think that would be helpful for you and your team, your family? Oh, for sure. I mean, I think so with my first, with my daughter, um, we used Nanit from the very beginning. I had her in my room. She was right next to me in bed, but I still had my Nanit on the flex stand on my nightstand. And I would lay in bed and look at her on my phone. And it was just a comfort and not having to like sit up and look over into the bassinet. Um, it was such peace of mind for me. I'll definitely be doing that again. And we did not have um, some of those milestones features that we do now, like head and body position. Um, so I'm so excited to be able to use that with my new baby um, and all of the devel developmental milestones um, features that we have. So capturing the first time your baby rolls over, sits up for the first time, like I didn't write any of that down with my daughter, like in my head, like I can go back. I'm like, I think she rolled over around. I actually don't know, maybe 10 weeks. I have no idea. You'd have to tell me when they typically roll over. I don't remember, um, but I'm excited to have a record of that. Like, that's so nice to be able to go back. And then I can put that in this baby's baby book um, and cherish those memories forever because you're just not remembering those things in the moment. It's too hard. Oh, definitely. I feel like that's going to be so special to start like from day zero with your nanny and you have a lot of experience with it already. So it's a little more seamless and it's just going to be super special to see and document and then have all of this information at your fingertips too. That's going to be so fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited. Looking forward to it. So what, let's close out a little bit guys with what has everyone been everyone's favorite milestone throughout this parenting journey. Anybody want to go first? Okay, I'll go first. Mine has been definitely being a little bit more confident as a mother. I feel like everybody spoke to, um, you know, having the struggles of not knowing. And for me being the expert, uh, that was a lot of pressure to feel like I had to know everything. And so the biggest milestone for me that I got kind of got over as a parent was kind of surrendering to not knowing everything 
And that for me doesn't sound like a milestone maybe to others, but for me being a little more type A and being used to knowing a lot, just saying, hey, I don't know everything. I'm open to researching. I'm open to having resources like the Nanit and the app and, and y'all's fantastic social media to kind of support me was a big, big step for me to admit even to my husband, you know, to my family. Um, and so that was a huge milestone as far as me as a parent and as as a mom. So I don't know if y'all resonate with that at all, but I'm I'm give my pat a pat on my back all the time just because I got here, you know, the baby's still alive, we're thriving as well as we can do. And um I'm I'm just excited and, and a lot more confident. So that's been a huge milestone for for myself. I think that's a great reminder. I don't do enough of that at all. Like I would, I could really hard to, yeah. 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 You get so in your head with everything and, you know, should, they should be sleeping more. They should be eating more. They shouldn't be eating that. They shouldn't be watching Miss Rachel. They should be out getting air more oxygen. Yes, the, shoulds. Mm -hmm. the, the shoulds can really get to you. And then it just kind of, com it's very compounding, I feel. And so just taking a step back and realizing, hey, it's, I don't, it's okay. Um, and just kind of giving yourself grace for where you are now, I think is just really important. And Dylan, I don't know if you can resonate with this at all, but my husband observes me going down some of these spirals and he's like, you guys are just wired so differently. Like he can separate and compartmentalize and kind of have a better perspective because I think just biologically, physiologically, like we're just wired differently. And maybe it's his personality too, right? Like, you know, I certainly have different personalities, but I'd love to hear a dad perspective on that because he's constantly like, hey, reminder, like, you know, like you, you can like let things go. Yeah, no, I definitely resonate with that for sure. My, my, my wife is, is goes on that path a lot. And sometimes I just got to take my son. I prop him up right next to her and I put on Elmo on tv mm -hmm. right and he he you know he'll, he'll go from you know kind of have been mr meltdown to cuddle you know he's cuddling and and then they my wife can relax you know on the fatherhood thing it is like one of the big milestones for me was going from like miss you're you're playing miss before before the baby comes you're playing mr fix it you're you're i we completely redid his nursery i put a new floor in the house i'm being mr handyman you know <laughs> and and a newborn phase you're still kind of the same way but you're with mom and baby so you're being oh you know uh you know she needs to get comfortable she's just got she just got done with, with you know she's postpartum i gotta help her i gotta fix this ba i'm on diaper duty i gotta do this diaper to now i'm the you know, I'm the court jester. I can make people laugh. I can lift them up. I can relax them, you know, and I can do that for my wife and, and, and my son. And it's the roles change as you, as the, as your, as your baby gets older and you and your, 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 your significant other learn to uh, uh, parent uh, and, 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 and be a baby. You, and, and my wife falls into, you know, like I said, my wife falls into that same thing. It's, it's the shoulds that really get to her. And trying to like remove her from that that frame of reference and and we're a family, you know, we should be allowed to relax and not worry about this stuff at, you know, eight, eight o'clock at night after he's gone to bed, you know, let's put on some, you know, Netflix and just chill out, you know, let's not go crazy. Um, and it's okay to put, I put on Miss Rachel, we put on Elmo. I put, you know, I've been playing like old cowboy tunes for my son. And <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> that's awesome. That's the thing that I like. So, um, yeah, I totally, I totally feel that. And I get that from my wife a lot. And, you know, you like, like you said, you, you know, as a husband, as a father, you got to be there to really like, kind of like recenter and, and bring everyone back down to earth and relax and, and give them space. And I, I can try to give my wife space to relax too. Like, you know, let me take him. I'll, I'll feed him. I'll do the diaper. You know, well, I'll do the bath tonight. Let's, you know, you know, let's that's, try to change up the chores a little bit. You know, things like that. Yeah, that's, you've assumed that role. It sounds like pretty seamlessly. You kind of just, it. it's one switch to the other. And that's really special. Your wife is so lucky. <laughs> um, Kayla, how about you? What's been your favorite? I feel like there's one milestone as a parent that has stuck with me from the very beginning. Um and I don't know if anyone else can relate, but it was the first time that I left the house by myself. 
with my newborn. <laughs> Um, it was almost like a test in a way I kept overthinking to myself, like, could I do this? I remember feeling like people were looking at me and wondering if this was my actual kid, if I was doing it right, wondering if, um, I looked like I knew what I was doing because spoiler alert, I didn't. Um, I remember feeling like in the moment it felt extremely overwhelming and thinking, was I forgetting anything? Do I remember how to unfold the stroller? All of it. However, that day, I proved to myself that I can do hard, intimidating things. And now that I'm past the newborn, toddler, and even preschool age, I'm celebrating my growth with every stage and moving on to the next one, even though that comes with grief each time. Um, but I'm sure there are still plenty of nerve wracking firsts here on this side with a first grader. But um, but yeah, bit by bit, I just continue to prove to myself that I'm courageous and I'm capable. <laughs> That's amazing, yeah. Kayla. I love that, Kayla. And I think for me, uh, parenting is so humbling. Like you just learn so much about yourself. But I feel like it's changed me. It's made me a much more empathetic person. I've learned how to let go of expectations and just be more in the moment. So. And I think that will help me beyond just parenting. I think it makes me better at my job. I think it makes me a better wife. It makes me a better friend. Um, so that's been a huge milestone for me. And then just being able to see how that impacts my daughter, right? Because I know like my mood, my behavior, like is so, she's so impressionable. So I want to make sure when I'm with her, I'm the most present that I can be and that you know, I let her have fun. She's a kid. I read something once where it was like, you know, half the time your kid has seen something for the first time ever. And it's so exciting. So like when we see an airplane, we freak out and everyone gets excited about it. And it's, it's fun to like be a child again too, with your kids. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say that the other, the only other more humbling thing than parenting is being learning how to do things on TikTok. Uh, for <laughs> But <laughs> I have to say that my you're killing um, it, Maristella. You're killing it. <laughs> yeah, um, we love it. <laughs> but the one of the most uh, yeah the milestones that I've loved is uh, when my kids have started to go to daycare, and then you go to pick them up, and you've run like you were late. You think that you messed up. You're thinking about what to cook for dinner, and they just run to you and they hug you, and like that is just like we're good. I got this. We we can be fine. We even if we eat chicken nuggets tonight, we're gonna be good. <laughs> There's just that moment when you feel them, you know, with the little teeny tiny arms and hands um grabbing you and you know, trying to kiss you with all the saliva going everywhere because they don't know what they're doing. Um, it's just so special. And I think it helps to sort of recenter in what's important and leave all those other worries go away. Definitely. Quinn, did you share your favorite milestone yet? Not yet. It's a bit of an extension of what Melanie said earlier in terms of like the explosive language that I'm observing, but it's not just like vocabulary. It's it's the fact that she's learning how to apply the language to how she's feeling. And yes, the extreme of that is what I opened this chat with in terms of like the, the meltdowns and such, but it's really, really cool. The first time that she grabbed my arm and said, mama, I love you so much. And I was like, and it was like unprompted, so random. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that was amazing because not only is it a milestone for her, it's a milestone for me in so many ways. Like I grew up in an Asian household where we weren't very emotive. Mm -hmm. Right. And we weren't utilizing a lot of language to talk about our feelings very much. And it's like the one thing that I want to not just like break the cycle, because I feel like that has a negative connotation, but just start, start new traditions and sort of like parent in my own way. Um, and a big part of that is understanding more of her emotion so that I can be a better parent to her. But then at the same time, how does that teach me about my own emotions? Because again, like I'm up against a very different childhood in that way. Um, so I'm learning right alongside her in so many ways. And it's just those like off the cuff, you know, catch you off guard type of moments that are like incredible. And then there's like 
we know those days where she'll use the words against me, like the team knows over the weekend, she was like, I love daddy. I don't love mommy. I'm like, okay, well then that's the flip side of that coin. Got it. You know, <laughs> but it's amazing either way. Yeah. It's so special. Cause they just get so much more expressive and their little personalities come out. And then it's like, nope, that's, that's directly me or that's directly my husband. And then it's one of those, well, I don't know where you got that from, but that's just your own, you know, and it's so special um, to see. So we yeah, love- like I will never forget the day Lily came up to me and she was like, I'm kind of mad right now. I don't know if I'm mad at you or if I'm mad because I don't want to do this thing, but can you help me breathe right now? <laughs> like, I can't yeah, that's a major, that. like, I admire that, admire that so much about you in terms of like the progress you've made with emotional language. Like, that's amazing. Thank you for saying that. It's, it's been a journey. <laughs> sure. And then, and, and I feel like having, you know, in this day and age, a community like this with Nanit, and then obviously within the app and then on social media and just media in general, having a place to have conversations like this. I think goes very far to do a quick parent recess. It's just an hour and we're just like brain dumping from and getting experiences from everybody. It's so special and so important and, you know, unheard of what 10 years ago you would have to meet in person or, you know, with COVID, we all learned how to be proficient with Zoom and things like that. And like, we're making this into something really special, productive and unique now. And so I I really enjoyed having these conversations with you guys. Thank you for joining me. Um, Any last questions in the chat? Everybody seems to be chatting it up in the chat. Let's take a look. Yes. Miss Rachel, uh, Winnie the Pooh, we're loving those theme songs and all the things. So it's been amazing to see the chat throughout this. Um, And just everyone. Thanks for engaging. (laughs) Yes. Thank you everybody for engaging. Hopefully we got all of these giveaways doled out. Um, Any last words, you guys? This was awesome. I love chatting with you guys. I think we have a couple Q and A's that we didn't get to. So we'll make sure to note those down um, and we can reach out to you guys directly. And I just want to thank you, Dr. Olivia, for such an amazing conversation, your continued partnership. Um, it's amazing when we get to sync up the brand with people like you, who, you know, just are such great supporters of ours and believe in our mission and it's, we couldn't do it without you. So thank you. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. It's just, uh, literally no brainer. I'm obsessed with the brand obsessed with the team. I can't thank y'all enough for inviting me to host this conversation. It was so fun to really just dive into everything. So hopefully we can do it again soon. Um, and thank you guys so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.